Hi all, this is Upasana from Edureka and this session will be answering all your questions you have regarding KPIs and the Power BI desktop. So before we begin, let's take a quick look at the outline of this tutorial. So today we shall be discussing one, what is KPI? Next, when to use KPI? Third, what do you require for KPI? And finally, how to use the KPI visualizations in the Power BI desktop? So without much ado, let's get started. So a lot of you might wonder, what is KPI? So a KPI or a key performance indicator is a visual cue that communicates with the amount of progress you've made towards a certain goal. It basically demonstrates how effectively a company is achieving key business objectives. So organizations use this KPI at multiple levels to evaluate their success on reaching targets both internally and externally. So high level KPI may be ones which focus on the overall performance of the enterprise while low level KPIs may focus on internal things like employees in departments such as sales, marketing, etc, etc. Next, so this is a really important question, when to use a KPI? So KPIs mainly answer two questions. A, what am I ahead or behind on? This specifically refers to a number which is your target. And secondly, how far ahead or behind am I? So this represents a trend which is related to the target. Since a KPI is based on a specific measure, it is designed to help you evaluate a current value and a status of the metric. So therefore, when we ask what do you require for a KPI, it basically requires a base measure that evaluates to a value and a target measure. It also requires a threshold or a goal which the target is set against. So currently a KPI data set in Power BI needs to contain goal values for a KPI. So if your data set does not contain one, don't worry. You can create goals by adding an Excel sheet with goals to your data model or in a PBIX file. So this is the next segment. I'm sure most of you were waiting for this till now. So how would you use your KPI visualization? So for that, we need to open our Power BI desktop. So we'll be creating a KPI that measures the progress we've made towards a certain goal. A lot of the people will directly start with a KPI, but I personally find it more comfortable to start with a column graph and then change it into a KPI. So before we start, let's import some data. Here I have an Excel sheet with KPI appropriate data. So this is what the preview of my data looks like. We've got an actual sales column and a target sales column. Month wise, here we've got the Jan to December month numbered accordingly, and here we have the fiscal month. For those who don't know, a fiscal month is basically months arranged according to the financial year of a country. Here it is April to March, hence, I've started with 1 being April and 12 being March. So let's get back to our charts. So, as I said, I'm going to start with a column chart. Here we are just going to drag and drop values. Like I'm just going to take the month and drop it into the graph and then take the actual drop it into the graph. Here we have a graph. Now the thing is Power BI desktop is actually smart enough that it knows what column to take as what parameter. So now we are going to change it into a KPI. Now this is my KPI icon. We're going to be using this. Let's select the KPI icon and there we have it. Now to turn it into an actual KPI, we must have a target. So let's take the target sales and put it in the target goals field. So this is what a KPI is mainly supposed to show here. This is a number that I'm ahead or behind on and this is the trend. Now looking at it this way, you might not see a problem, but I assure you there is a problem with this. For that, I'll have to use the table. Using the table is as easy as using any other visualization here. We just take the month, drop it, the actual sales and the target sales per month. I'll be going to the formatting pane here. I'll just increase the size by a little bit. We go to the grid and we increase the text size so you can see it properly there. As you can see, the months are ordered alphabetically. So this has to be changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the month tab here, go up to modeling and here you can see an option which is sort by column. Here you can either change this to fiscal month or month number. I'm simply going to choose the month number here. There. See how our target has changed. 
Optionally, you can also format this KPI by choosing this paint roller looking icon right here, which is the formatting panes icon. Now here we have the indicator, which controls the indicator display units and the decimal places. Next, we have the trend axis. When it is set on, the trend axis is displayed in the background of the KPI. Next, we have the goals. When set on, the visual displays the goal and the distance from the goal. Next, we have color coding. Suppose your company follows a certain color palette. This is where you can change the colors to match your color palette. Here, you can also choose the direction of your graph. Suppose high is good or low is good. For example, if it is something like earning versus wait time, typically a higher value for the earnings is better. Suppose it is something like a defaulters graph, then essentially a lower value is better. So you can change the color settings accordingly. Here, good color is green, bad color is red, neutral color is yellow. So let's get back to our graph. Now that you know how this tool basically works, you can do some really smart things with it. Like you can create a measure in the model to return a string. So I'll be calling this progress. Now you can see the progress column is added here. What I will do is I'll be taking a card and I'll be adding the progress to its field here. So it's basically going to return the progress this year. So this is a lifestyle and it will keep changing our data set. You can also do a bunch of other interesting things. For example, instead of a single KPI, you can use a multi KPI. For that, all you must do is go to the home tab here and on the ribbon, you can see something called from marketplace. Click on it. Search for something called power KPI. OK, you can see the icon appear here with other icons on your visualization pane. You can use it like you use any other visualization here. So you can just drag and drop different values on your values. Your axis has to be a certain date. It does not matter what date, but it can be a period or a month, but it has to have a date. Then in your values field, you can just drop actual and target. There you go. This also you can format using this. This also you can format using your formatting pane. Like you can go and change your layout. You can change the title. Suppose now it says actual and target by month. You can just rename it to KPI. There are a bunch of other options you can play around with. Let's move on to something else. Another thing you can do is you can actually get a custom KPI from the marketplace again. You can just go to the KPI option right at the bottom somewhere. You will have something called the KPI indicator. It'll take some time to load. You can also use this like any other visualization on your visualization pane like so. You can use it like you use any other KPI tool here. As you can see, these has vibrant colors and it shows the graph in a really nice way with these dots and indicators. What you can also do is you can go to this formatting pane and you can change the graph. You can go here to KPI general and choose a chart type. Right now we have a line chart. Then we have a line no marker where those indicators are gone. Next, we can use a bar chart as well. You can choose a banding type where the increasing value is better, decreasing value is better, or the closer is better. Like the increasing and decreasing I had explained earlier in the KPI chart. The closer is better option can be used where you are testing medicines and chemicals. Here right now we have increasing is better. You can change the banding percentage. You can change the colors like you did in the previous charts. Let me get a slicer here. Now I'll go to the formatting pane and in the selection control, I'm going to turn off the single select so I can choose multiple things on the slicer. As you can see, you can use it like any other charts on your Power BI. All three of them are interacting the same way. With that, I think we've covered the KPI. 
If you like what you saw, then please like and share this session. If you have any queries, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. This concludes our session. Thank you and have a great day ahead. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!